go in and finish. It, it was a really good try. Uh, Ken Seo, actually, though, whilst you might question some of the defensive efforts down his edge, what what I would say is he scored a pretty good try himself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Slightly passive Lee's defence in the build-up to his try, if you watch it. There was some offloads where the player was just sort of standing around waiting for someone to come to offload yeah. it to when maybe the defence could have done a little bit more. But um, great acceleration once the ball got out to CEO. He didn't have much space down that sideline. And we see no. too often, I, for my liking nowadays, wingers being almost scared to go down the, the line in, in those cl- close situations. But CEO wasn't here and it, he scored a cracker. Yeah, he did. It was it was a very nice try. As you say, it looked to me as if Leeds were just sitting off a little bit too much and it, they only had to, um, you know, find one uh, bit of a gap there and then they were quickly out, uh, quickly out to CEO, who, uh, as you say, did a, did, a, did a very nice job of accelerating past the remaining cover and, uh, and uh, getting it down in the corner. It was, it was a nice try. It, it was, it was a good game. I, th- I thought it was, you know, Leeds were obviously completely, totally dominant uh, in that first half. Salford looked like they were finding a way to at least make it a respectable um, game um, and score. And then two, the two sin binnings, which I have to admit at the time, I thought both looked a little bit soft, but obviously you can't see exactly what uh, exactly what was said to, uh, to Mr. Taylor. Um, but it, I mean that just that was it. I mean that 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 just put the icing on the cake, and uh, uh, you know that just allowed Leeds to uh, you know rub home the dominance um, and and finish off finish off Salford. Well, Salford are you know by far the worst disciplined side this year. They've got the most red cards and the most yellow cards. So yeah. nine Simbinins is is the most in the league so far this year. Uh, and three red cards is the most in the league so far this year so you know it's bitten them again and, and cost them an opportunity to come back into a game you know Leeds are right, Leeds are right for a second half comeback aren't yeah. they after the last yeah, 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 two yeah, games against are. Catalan so uh, so yeah Salford weren't able to do it mostly because of their own lack of discipline as much as what apparently was some good performances by um, the likes of Cruz Leeming uh, and Harry Newman and even young Callum McClellan getting a chance in the absence of of Luke Gale. Yeah, not not a bad crowd actually at this one either, Mark. Ten thousand five hundred. I mean, less than it pr- would have attracted, I'm sure, uh, pre-COVID. But but you know, nevertheless, at least up into double figures, which is yeah, our, our first five-figure crowd of the of the year in in Super League is a is a. Yeah positive even though it's probably four to five thousand down on what Leeds would announce yeah. on a normal match day no. yeah, indeed uh game three then on friday night was wigan hosting wakefield so obviously i've watched this one i was at this one um it was nine nil to wigan at half time it finished 25 points to 12 to to wigan um in the end in front of five thousand five hundred and fifty five uh, all the fives. Tom Grant was the referee. Um, in terms of the stats, Wigan made over 200 more metres, under 1,000 metres made by Wakefield. That's always a worrying sign. Wigan made more ground and did it at one metre per carry better average game with two more breaks as well. Wakefield did have a better team tackle success rate, although they also had five more errors in this game compared to their hosts. Individually, Kai Pierce Paul had 125 metres. Willie Isa had 118 metres. Ethan Havard had 114 metres and Jackson Hastings had four try assists and 109 metres. For Wakefield, Jay Pitts had a try, 49 tackles, 14 of which were marker tackles. He's the only one of their players that hits our hits our significant stats, though. Um, uh, uh, but unfortunately for Wakefield and Jay Pitts, he was hit with a grade B dangerous contact charge and received, has received a too-much penalty notice after this game. I, I can't say that I'm aware of what incident that was from because I've not had the chance to, like I say, get the minutes properly up. Kalepi Tanganoa of Wakefield also got a caution for a dangerous contact. I wonder if that was the very heavy, but not around the head, so arguably not illegal, um, contact he made on... Uh, I can't remember which Wigan player, but there was a Wigan player was tackled, but not held, and then Tanganoa came in very, very 
strongly when he was on the floor. But he didn't hit him in the head, so it's not a penalty, is it? So, um, But the Wigan fans didn't like the cheap shot that Tangano put in. On one of the young players as well, it was, it must have been on um, either Kai Pace Paul or... <sighs> I can't remember. It, it must have been on Kai because I don't know why we would have been so upset about it if it was on one of the uh, big heavy forwards. <laughs> <laughs> We did get some fan views in on this one. We did. So Matt Speakman uh, says, professional job done on Wakefield and rugby league's wingiest man. It must be hard to be the worst for Fita when there are so many. Maybe that's why he has taken up refereeing. Jackson Hastings ran the show again, and it looked like Wigan were going to score every time they got the ball. After a good 60 minutes, though, Wigan and Tom Grant must have taken pity on Chester because they let Wakey back in with two easy tries. Wakey White said, Another story of missed opportunities and schoolboy errors by Trini. First half was quite even, but Wakey couldn't take their chances, and Hastings just seemed to know how to unlock us every time. I also failed to source a pie bomb in Wigan, which left me hungry and sad. <laughs> White Pie says, uh, Wigan's starting to find a bit of form, and for Fita shithousing, because he was being dominated. Finally back in the West Stand posh seats to see Wigan start to, uh, to string some decent attack together as Hastings ran the show. That said, the try of the match came from Shorrox after a deft inside kick from The Pearl. Oh, my boy. I know. I, I knew you'd like that one. Uh, Defence was largely good apart from the last 10 when we took a foot off the gas. My only gripes with tonight's game were some curious refereeing decisions, particularly in the second half, and more cru crucially, uh, the con uh, concession stand ran out of pies and there was no decent beer on offer. That's, that's not good. Running out of pies in Wigan, I would have thought that was illegal. Uh, well, it, you can't be called pie eaters if you don't eat all the pies, I suppose. I suppose there's that. Uh, Jen K said, great to have normal service back at the DW. A good win and a great performance from Hastings. Wakefield never really dug in until the game was already lost. Hope we can keep these wins going while we wait for players to return. Um, yeah, look, Hastings was very good in this game. I think one thing that Wakefield failed to do was tire Hastings out, like we'd seen happen um, in a couple of his other games at fullback, most notably when we played the you know better teams in Warrington and, and St. Helens. Wakefield gave him enough space to drop the ball off to another outside back to make the, the tough Furley carries in sets and it meant he wasn't out of energy and ideas by the time Wigan were up the other end of the pitch which they were able to get up to the other end of the pitch um, not you know more easily than they have done in a lot of games recently um, I, I would say Wigan in this one the forwards actually made some ground which was um, was, was good which was pleasing. <laughs> so so I think um, that was a positive. Wigan were better with the ball. If, if Wigan's goal kicking is abysmal this year, Harry Smith, I can't say is a fantastic goal kicker because current form would tell me he's not, but he has been a fantastic goal kicker. I've seen him in the academy kicking him from everywhere, <laughs> never missing a kick. And then maybe under the pressure of being in the first team and I, I'm not sure but he's not quite settled into that goal kicking role yet in the first team um, which I think he will do in, as time goes along uh, but that kind of helped paint a bit of a narrower picture on the scoreline um, I do think you know Wigan and Wakefield fans have touched on it that Wigan looked threatening in this game particularly through Hastings he had he had the four try assists um one from a kick, but the others threw really good, close to the line, fast cut out passes to the wingers. Um, so really good to see try scored on both sides. Yeah, watch the Liam Farrell set up for Jake Shorrock's try because um, it, it was a really neat kick. I don't know how much of it was perfect execution and how much of it was. It's always a little bit lucky when a kick from a forward lands perfectly, <laughs> but um, but the, let, you know. the, let, let him take the credit for it. Oh yeah, the the boy's got magic in them feet. Um, if if Warren, if sorry, if Wakefield had have decided to play with the same intensity that they played in the last ten minutes when Wigan did fade, uh, to be fair, but then they would have been much closer in this game. They they had a, a fairly strong spell just before 
Wigan's second try and just after half time where I thought they had their intensity and intent better um, and Wigan were able to come through those spells quite easily I thought um, but yeah a couple of really preventable soft tries at the end I don't understand what people are mentioning the referee for because there was I, I don't think nothing nothing hugely of note that stuck out from my mind um, but maybe because we won and I wasn't looking for it uh, the main takeaway for me was Wigan were better with the ball than they have been for a while and the forwards actually made some ground don't know if that says more about Wakefield's forward pack than it does about Wigan though mm. I mean I, I, I only caught the um, I, I, I listened to this on the radio and then I caught the tries um, uh, today uh, caught up with watching the tries uh, and, and it, you know the impression I got from listening on the radio was that it was the Jackson Hastings show, and then nothing that I saw today on the on the internet led me to feel otherwise. I think he he um, he did have the ball on a string near the line, and he just kept uh, re re uh, performing a really fast cutout ball to Bibby, and it was just like, yeah, there's another one. Oh, and there's another one. Um, and the fact that he showed up and did the same thing on the other side for Marshall's try as yeah, well, I, I love to see that. Did the same thing. It was great. Yeah, <laughs> he had a he had a very very good game. And if um, with you know get, he gets a little bit of extra space with playing full back, and he did in this game anyway. Well, he actually uh, play. He actually attacked more from full back. He he, yeah, he was yeah. the second or third receiver rather than yeah. still trying to push his way into first receiver which yeah. had, had happened in other games, where, maybe where because we, we were behind, whereas this game we hit the front, he was able to play that better. Because, um, yeah. you know, he's a, he's a, he's a compare, isn't he? He doesn't want to lose, and he thinks he's the best option for us to win. But sometimes, you know, especially if he's not playing in his usual position, he can't play his usual way. And, and yeah. that's a, that was a, as impressive as anything else from him in this game. Yeah, and a, a nice little drop goal just before half-time as well to... Uh... Take, uh, take, you know, just put a little bit of extra icing on the cake at half time, and then, and then the start of the second half really the, the game was put to bed. Um, uh, you know, one, once the uh, two tries went in, you know, quite quickly after half time, uh, that that was it. it. Was game over. I stopped listening. In other words, at that point, Mark. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, then let's stop talking about it at this point and move on to the last game, which was on Saturday, uh, the the surprise game, the the round thirteen game that got played in round fifteen, Catalans versus Hulkingston Rovers. Um, it was twenty six points to twelve to Catalans at half. So, sorry, to Hull KR at half time, uh, but the Catalans were able to turn it around in the second half and sneak home for a thirty two points to thirty win in front of five thousand five hundred eighty six people. James Child was the referee um, in terms of the team stats defeated Hulk KR actually ended up with more metres uh, by 84 and a better average game by 1 metres per carry and an extra clean break so they might have expected to sneak a win if it weren't for 4 more errors made, 4 more penalties conceded and a 4% worse team tackle success rate <laughs> unfortunately their eventual undoing, individually Tom Davies 170 metres, Fuad Yaha uh, a try, a very crucial try 7 tackle busts and 115 metres Sam Tompkins a try, 7 tackle busts and 107 metres and Julie Julian Busquet, 107 metres and three successful offloads. So a bit of Wigan and a bit of France coming together in those ones. Uh, for the losing Robins, Adam Quinlan with a try, 156 metres and two clean breaks. Greg Minikin with a try, I will talk about that try later, and 166 metres. Sean Kenny Dow with a try and 129 metres. And Ryan Hall with 115 metres. Nothing out of the disciplinary on this one, David. Maybe Ooh. the pitchers didn't get... Maybe the pitchers were too... Uh, too Great. grainy, eh? <laughs> Let's have to find out what Alex Chan thought of the quality of the image quality, but um good enough to not not pull out anything. Um we did get a couple of fan views though. We did. Alan Walker, short and sweet. Deja vu. Yeah. Three in a row behind at half time pulling out of the bag. 
Uh, yeah. Tom Andrews said, as this game was played in North Korean media blackout conditions, I'm claiming we won 104 to 4. No one's perfect. The try where Ryan Hall carries Sam Cassiano in one hand and the ball in the other before front flipping over the line was my favourite by far. <laughs> Unless you were there, I refuse.